Hello there. Welcome to the Kirk Minahan wrap-up show for March 31st, 2021. Uh, today's show was titled Blue Checks, uh, in reference to the Blue Check Bar Brigade that is not happy that Barstool Sports is doing a true crime podcast that is sponsored by Taser for some reason. They said, nope, this is inevitable. Uh, it, it's just where everything was headed. Uh, I didn't know Taser was like a company that had some controversy with them. Uh, they must have some sort of thing. I, I know that they make great great products, great tasers, and uh, it, it's great. Actually, uh, one of my friends owns one of their products, and she you know, carries it home from work. So it's uh, it's great. I'm joined by my Wednesday usual. It's been a while, Mr. Tim. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Uh, so you're I saying enjoy- Taser is appropriately named as a company. Yes. So it's Taser. It worked it, out. Yeah. It is a Taser. Uh, <laughs> so, so I'm joined by Tim. Uh, as always, on this beautiful Wednesday. How are you doing, Tim? Doing good. It's been a long time. Good to hear your voice. Good to hear the show back. I know. It feels like it's been, man, I'm telling you, a week off feels like a year off. It really does. It's 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 crazy when, uh, when, when, when you just look at it. So, nope, yeah, it was a decent show today. I think it was kind of throwing a curveball. I think Kirk had a plan. Yeah, of how he like wanted it. to how he wanted the show to go, and then when Steve threw him the curveball about the uh, the cheese issue, it kind of I think ruined it. I think from what I believe from hearing Monday's show, I thought today was going to be kind of a Jacaro focused day, announcing the five k, officially announcing it, kind of going over that other asshole who lost her job at the USA Today, um, and just kind of talking about what this event is going to be, you know how to get there, how to buy your ticket, uh, all these all these other things. And I really think Kirk was thrown off when Steve said, yeah, so we can't do a book burning there. Mr. Tim? Well, oh, you're muted. Sorry about that. Oh, no worries. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think, I think, I mean, without the book burning, it's just a 5K. And, you know, Kirk always likes to do something different. He never does anything the traditional way. So I think when... When Steve said, "Hey, listen, we don't have a 5K. Uh, we don't have we don't have the ability to burn books at Smith Country Cheese," Kirk was like, "Well, fuck it. Uh, well, he has, to, <laughs> he has to. Yeah, he has to rethink this entire thing through. I mean, he's got to get a different place and and everything. So, uh, so I think that's where the show was headed. But I think it was just throwing such a curveball that you know Kirk kind of had to go in a different direction. And uh, so you said that he got a." You're saying this race might have got a little bit moldy, if you will. Yes, haha, cheese, haha, right? Cheese yes. jokes. I'm, I'm not that, a fan. I'm not a fan of cheese. Smiths and uh, Kirk and uh, you know scrape the mold off and uh, make things gouda again. I I don't hope that. I hope that whatever Kirk wants to happen is going to happen. happens. So you know, I as far as the book burning is concerned. Um, you uh yeah book burning we all know it's a it's a symbol of something else right uh but try getting rid of old books that nobody wants you're forced to throw them in the dump so i ask you which is worse throwing trash in the dump or burning your trash because that book is trash first of all as you know mm-hmm. oh god it was terrible worst day um life. you can't give any old book to the li- to any library they won't take them in fact my library says you got to bring them in and they want to look it over for various yep. reasons. One, they just might not, not like the content. Two, might be in shitty shape. Three, you can't unload a lot of books. You can't unload to like save is and goodwill anymore. They don't want them all. Books are big. They're heavy. Some are just garbage that people don't want. What are mm-hmm. you going to do with it? Okay, so what's the difference? You throw it out or you burn it? Yeah. No. You know? And I mean, I actually tried donating sidelined to the uh, Mansfield High School and the Mansfield Library. Uh-huh. I went in there. And uh, I said, I'd like to donate this book. I think it, it's important for women to read uh, this woman's perspective on, on sports journalism. And they actually spat in my face. They said, you're the fifth person who's tried to give us this book. They literally just, it. <laughs> and they just spat in my face and said, if you ever show your place, your face in this fucking library ever again. Whoa, that is a pretty man. angry librarian. Yeah, I mean, they were pissed. I was like, I was like, Jesus Christ. So I, I mean, I walked out and I was like, the only, I guess the only thing I can do is to burn the book and i mean i was super excited when kirk announced the uh the 5k and then everything like 
like what's going to happen there. Think but of the, it just, the, everything, every cloud is a silver lining, right? Maybe it would be cold that day and we could warm up by the, I, the I know what is sidelined. You know, what if the, the apocalypse happens and, you know, we're all cold and, you know, I think we would all gather together as a tribe, as men of fans, we'd kind of be as one. Uh, what would be better to born for, uh, burn for warmth and heat and, you know, food other than Julie DeCaro's book? I can't think of anything better. So. Now, are you, are you worried? I know you're going to get into this because we chatted a little bit about it, but he, uh, I saw you tweet where she is worried about potentially suing a semi-famous, I believe she called Kirk, a semi-famous person. Are you worried about being sued by a not famous but thinks they're a semi-famous person? I would love to be sued by Julie oh, DeCaro. Uh, I, think, <laughs> uh, I think I think it would be great. Uh, I mean, I, like, I, I don't know what else to say. I don't think she has. Like Penguin came out and said, hey, listen, uh, you can read books on the internet. So, uh, Julie DeCaro sucks. Definitely took uh, it in the wrong direction. She could have got yeah. publicity out of this, and instead, oh, she, she did. She did. She cried about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But not, and not until I think a publisher said, "Hey, dumb done. We're in the market to make money, not uh, to yeah. block people." Now, where where do you want to read the King James Bible? There's uh, a lot of places to choose from around us, right? That was brought up today in one of the phone calls. It was. Uh, it was mentioned, someone asked, uh, said, I should write my own book, which is something I threw on Twitter the other day as kind of like a joke, just to kind of be like, oh, I bet if I wrote a book, it could get better than 65,000th place on Amazon, you know, bestsellers list. But hey, by the way, that started out at Barnes & Noble the day it was re released at 256,000th book. Oh, Jesus Christ. I haven't checked BNN in a while, but it was uh, pretty up there. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, yeah, one of the callers said that, and, you know, they kind of transitioned. Kirk might turn this into kind of like a live event of me reading the Bible. You know, I kind of think it would be nice to kind of rent out, like there's an Orpheum Theater in Foxborough. It's a nice, uh, I'm oh, not yeah. sure. The, the pink building? Yep. I'm sure yeah. there's, I'm sure they're not doing uh, that great of business right now. So perhaps, you know, I could be getting in contact with them and try to do something. Hopefully they wouldn't back out at the last second and say, so you that, know, that would be a, would it be a multi-night event or this is, you're going to power through, right? I'm going to try. I'm going to read the King James Bible in one sitting. So <laughs> from front to back. So I'm smelling a great fundraiser opportunity, whether that's done at a, at an event, whether that's done in person or it's done online on some form of uh channel uh, which i'll get to in a second mm -hmm. uh no I'm, I'm going to read the king james bible <laughs> will, will there be a catheter involved in this event uh no but uh you know those homer buckets they sell at home depot those mm -hmm. orange buckets they're mm -hmm. great they're like you get a cap so what you do is you cut a pool noodle in half and you put one around the top and you can just sit use it as a oh, toilet it's, that, it's eh? perfect yeah it's called the jimmy buffett shitter uh because that jimmy buffett concert that's what they do so i'll just have one nearby uh it's so if i need to piss or shit too. yeah yeah uh so yeah so that was an interesting phone call that was brought up but i i i really just want to get back to the point where i don't kirk was truly shocked when this when the country cheese thing came out and when he was like well fuck and I don't I, I I could legitimately hear nervous nervousness in Steve's voice. Steve's voice. He was like, he yeah. was like, fuck. You you know, uh sometimes I don't think Steve, I not that Steve doesn't get Kirk, but just he he did not expect this reaction. I bet he expected because in Steve's brain he thought, okay, book burning, obviously they don't want that to happen. Kirk is saying this is a joke, but I don't think Kirk was ever saying this is a joke. And I think that came to kind of a shock uh from Steve. Yeah, he, I mean, Kirk said he wasn't fucking around. He's an artist. This is part of his art. And that is that is a great point. Mm -hmm. From a business perspective, totally see where Smith is coming from. From an art perspective, it's, it is a piece of art that Kirk is going to enable that day, mm -hmm. wherever it might be. You can call it a book burning, but it's actually... Uh, it's no different from the portrait of uh, menstrual Jesus or the show where somebody pissed on the Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. It's just it's art. no different in my book, you know. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's it's a free country. It's, a, it's expression. He's you know? not, and by any he, book burning is associated usually with censorship. This couldn't be further from the truth. 
This is take out the trash and get rid of it because nobody wants it. Yeah. By the way, this uh, is a woman who called them a fucking racist. Oh, um, yeah. She debases all of us. I mean, fuck her. She's lucky she even got that thing published. So I, I'm with Kirk on that one. And, and hopefully the, they can get it worked out. You know, it'd be great if it was Ed Smith's. Um, yeah, I, I, I hope wrong. so. Yeah. But it's uh, it's not looking great at the moment, if we're being honest, Tim. So, but that that was um, but the I know what you're saying about Steve bringing it to Kirk and Kirk saying, you know, these are things that maybe we should talk about outside of this show. But the raw emotion is is um, it's real, which mm -hmm. is very interesting to hear. Because if they were in, if this were in other media, you wouldn't probably hear that. They could have very easily chopped that out too, right? Oh yeah, they just dumped it. Oh, hundred percent. And Kirk chose to leave it in. So I love that part. Yeah, that's the uh, one thing you know you're getting with Kirk is he's gonna leave everything in, which is truly what makes him, you know, incredible, the greatest broadcaster. So of our you, time. you know, oh, so Tim, by the way, I don't mean to yeah. interrupt you. Uh yeah, yeah. but it, it is it is five twelve. Oh. Um in case it's you were uh forty eight yeah, before it, the hour. Yeah, it's forty eight. <laughs> 48 to the hour. So it uh it currently is 512. He uh, he's someone that I can't wait. I can't wait for Kirk to sick the dogs on him. I'm 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 waiting, you know, sitting there. I'm praying that Kirk will just be like, oh, what 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 big event is coming? I guess opening day is what tomorrow. So would yeah. Friday be a good day? But what are they waiting gonna wait for the NFL draft? Because yeah. then they'll get a lot a lot of calls then. I, I think they're gonna be on to people because I did dip in a little bit this morning and I heard them mention something. Oh, what was it? It was about um it was definitely a reference to KMS. Uh mm -hmm. it was something either Greg Hill or Curtis brought up. I apologize, I didn't write it down, but I thought I gotta remember that because it was definitely a reference to the show. So they might be um on, i'm sure they are onto that at the station 100 oh, percent. Right? i mean they're not i was gonna say they're not stupid they are but they're, i mean they're not living in a bubble they're aware that mina fans can control that station whenever they want whenever kirk gives the barking orders to so i, I, I love when kirk takes things and exposes them for what they are and first of all 617 report collecting that and submitting it was wow. awesome and great one after that, that was so good and then to hear the comments that Gresh had to basically validate what he was doing and defend what he was doing. I loved when Wiggy was calling him out on it mm -hmm. and saying how stupid it was. That was awesome because Gresh genuinely sounded like he was pissed off. And this oh, is what was. Sultan told him to do. And by the way, I was just notating a show from October, just going back to some notes. October 18th of 2019. Kirk refers to Andy Gresh as one of the biggest assholes in all of media. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, he, yeah, just, he, he just seems him. like the fact that he's like, oh, when, when he pulls out the, well, you're talking about it card. It's like, okay, we yeah, get it. Know, yes. Yeah. We're talking about it. Your show <laughs> fucking sucks. <laughs> uh, but, oh, look, they're talking about it. It's not really gaining any social media buzz. It's kind of just everyone just making fun of him. Great it's point. Not, no, it's someone tweeted that out earlier. That's a great point, Justin, that, that's the old adage. That is such old school. Well, no, you know, any press is good press. Not true. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if you call the child molester, that's not good press. Um, mm -hmm. And we're talking about it. We're being critical of it. And it's not something that's going to draw us to the show to listen to it. And the mm -hmm. interactions someone put out earlier, I forget who it was. Um, so I apologize for that. But I think they have. Oh, no, it was Toucher and Rich or. or yep. Sports Hub, they have like 100,000 or 80,000 followers. They had 20 likes. So it's not effective. You mm -hmm. know, and I think that's what pisses these consultants off. This line of bullshit they've been feeding the media and radio for, for so long and giving us that cookie cutter garbage that we don't listen to anymore. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. And I think they're pissed because you can find out statistics and you can find out engagements and it's just not there. Yeah. But now there will be. Because of the time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, also, uh, Tim, it is now 515, quarter Which past. Which would be. Oh, 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 Justin. Oh, that's Didn't right. Yeah. Crash? Uh, ah, fuck. Huh? See, this, is why, this is why I can never make it in the business. Now you got to double why, up, right? This is No, why, that's you know, the double up. The double up is 15 past and 45 before the hour. Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> but never on, never on the uh, the top or the bottom, isn't that what he said? You don't want to be the whole hour or the half hour. You want oh, to go a little Jesus off. Christ, it's, it's <laughs> just so imagine? Fucking... 
sinking that much time into the theory on how to say the oh time. Oh my god! It's just like I, I've never, I've listened to radio. <laughs> I don't want to say religiously, but I've listened to radio pretty, pretty well ever since I was sixteen. And I never once, I, I had a, I drove a nineteen nine Toyota Corolla, and it did not have a clock in the car. Okay. I never once looked to the radio and the radio host to tell me what time it was. Time was. I either had my phone or I just didn't care. I was never like just driving around not knowing and what time it is and, and think, oh, we'll have a doctor's appointment at four. And then, you know, and then Zolak would be like 3.37. And I go, oh, fuck, crap. I got to head over yeah. now. Shit. You know, it, it, it's just unbelievable to put that much effort into a theory that is completely right. shit insane. Right. That's um, the part I love is how much thought, effort, and concentration and focus goes into something so freaking stupid i'm with you i there are days i'll be working out in the yard i don't have my my watch on and i'll hear the time but it's not like oh crap I, you don't, I almost forgot i had to go you don't like <laughs> it's like oh, jesus like I, I i rely on the sun more for the time than i do for radio hosts you know it's like oh it's getting dark Use your hand if you know what time it is I, well i guess I, I guess grush proved us wrong though we're talking about it <laughs> we are talking about it his show is about to blow the fuck up tim Kirk Minahan show. Oh, I mean, they, they already announced an end date for this show. What kind of show does that? You know, I, I mean, Gresh is taking over this market. It's not. It, it's it's not going to be a competition. Justin, which would which do you think would get better ratings? I know what I think. A show or a radio station that literally just said the time every, let's say every ten seconds, or uh, Gresh and Queef. I'm going to say uh, I, if you, before I was just announced the time, this might be a project for you. I was just about to say, Tim, I think I know what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs> it's 518. It's, it's 519. Uh, I bet that would get more um, listenership <laughs> than that terrible show. Just yeah. announcing the time. Yeah, I think it would be. Uh, I, th I, th I, th I think that might be a, a project. So that kind of goes on to my next point with Periscope shutting down. He's, he, I'm, I don't know, Tim, if you saw, but Kirk had his last final Periscope saw that. Yep. today. Uh, you know, yep. it was sad. A lot of you know, a lot of great memories on Periscope that go back to the Kirk and Callahan days with you know him throwing a fit in uh, was it Walgreens or CVS? CVS. Well, no, that's Dale, Dale Bear. Dale Bear was CVS. no Dale Bear was a CVS. Um, yeah. Was it a Borders or a Barnes and Noble? That he uh, that he said I'm, I want out of Radio.com. I know there oh, was a big. Uh, that's right. Um, ooh, good good. Radio.com. What is that? Oh yeah, Odyssey.com or whatever whatever the fuck. <laughs> Some Audacity. Thank you. That was the other. That was what the tweet had to do with. Someone tweeted out how uh, Odyssey also put in like five of the stations. And one of them listed is AAF. So there's a lot of tension. Yeah, that's so funny. That's that is, that's incredible. It's, it's just a lot. That, that's just that's like that's like if Barstool was like check out our podcast and they listed you know the Michael Rappaport show. Yeah, exactly. As, as, yeah. You know, as one of them, it's just like oh my god, you guys can't do two minutes to to, to double check this. What fucking losers! Uh, it it really is it really is embarrassing. Just everything that went on, but no, I, I might have to test it out. So that kind of goes on to my my next thing. Like I said, with Periscope shutting down, with the unfortunate uh, Kirk Minahan network being unable to, you're unable to go live currently on it due to uh, a copyright strike against it. Um, I'm going to try to start up. The, there is a Kirk Minahan show Twitch account, which is where like Weei uh, plays their things. I'm going to try to start doing a couple things on there in the meantime. So perhaps that could kick it off with me just telling the time. So <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll definitely look you mention the time. Half I don't minute, know. Minute. That's a lot of talking. Uh, I don't know, Tim. We'll see. I'm, Tim, I read a book yes, about let them wear towels for eight <laughs> hours straight. Okay. So I think I, I, think right I can say, it. I think I could say 1131 every, you know, 1132 every, every now and then. Every, uh, well, it would be every minute. Yeah. It would, uh, yeah, no, I definitely have to uh, check that out. And so, so Twitch is something that's being investigated for, uh, yes, it, um, I'm going to be. We already have one, but uh, I just logged into it and I just have to kind of set it up, make it look pretty. What about, and, uh, um, Instagram? What is it? Instagram, um, what do they do? You Instagram can't save TV? that. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. So, uh, and also StreamYard can go directly to Twitch, it can't go to Instagram. Oh, so, so that'll make it like um, easy. Yep. So yeah, so it'll make it much much easier 
Will you be doing that. your own intern Justin Periscope sign off like everybody around the world is doing tonight? Oh, maybe I should. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what exactly my my, my sign off would be. I mean, I'm not known for periscopes, as you can see from the Madawaska trip, where there were six seconds each. Um, you yeah. can vomit. Uh, you know, this is my Periscope sign off. We're live on Periscope right now. Uh, farewell, Periscope. Uh, I bid you adieu. You made Twitter no money, so good job on that. Fuck Jack Dorsey. Um, callers. And we didn't get to that? the callers. Callers. Oh no, we have. Oh, we're we're getting to the callers. Yeah, I like to give my my adieus halfway through the show. Uh, so yeah, I don't I didn't think the callers were great today. There was a lot of just like people just asking personal questions. I will say Kirk was right. They were better than Monday's callers. Monday's callers were atrocious. Uh, but today's callers weren't. They were better, but they weren't much better. I mean, the guy who called about needles in a public bathroom. It's like. Why would Kirk have a take on this? I, I I don't understand it. Well, that's the thing. Kirk can have a take on anything, right? Mm -hmm. Anything, anything under the sun. Uh, so maybe that just wasn't there today. He was trying. You know, he'll always say, "Okay, lead me down the path. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you walk. Lead me down and this he, path." He did do that great with yeah. the uh, with the guy who brought up that Steve was a center. And then yes, that was, Kirk, Kirk was, was like, Kirk was like, was like name name the five name the five positions. That was excellent. He's like, Forward, guard, center. How can, how can you – I never played – well, not past elementary school because I'm a shrimp. I never yep. played basketball, but even I know the positions. I, I don't even I, watch. How do you play high school varsity basketball and not know, Justin? I, I don't know. I never played basketball, uh, but I know <laughs> the positions. Right. Of the he team. played. So, even I know the center God, is the big guy he, in the middle. Did he, though? Well, yes. well I think – Let's just say he mentioned somebody. It's no big secret. He mentioned Coach Pistol Pete, who is still coaching, and um, hoping to get Coach Pistol Pete on a decent signal episode soon. Oh, and there maybe we go. We'll learn some more. There yeah, we go. The digging well, uh, has begun. Well, Howie Carr wrote those books alone. Didn't need no help. He hey, did how it all did you like? Uh, how did you like Christina from Connecticut? I like. Oh, she was the best. She was. She. She's the. I hope she calls in every day. It seems like she's going to be a regular guest. Gee, who are you? To, uh, who are you dead naming? That was a he. No, I'm pretty sure that was a she. Who are you to slap identities on people? I'm pretty just sure Christina, Christina from Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just going to assume that. Uh, that I mean, I know Kirk loves her. Steve loves her. They seem to have a great time with them. I thought the uh, questions were awesome. Yes, yes, the questions were good. But there was a couple – and I swear to God, Tim, did this intern call in before? Because I know he started off his call saying first time, Come long on. time. And I've heard this story before. I don't know if it was on a Mike and the Minifans or something, but I believe he's called in before. Is um, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure him, but there has definitely been EEI interns who have called in for sure. Yes. But I thought the funniest part about that was how shocked Kirk was over the guy's name, Don. Yeah. Like, Don? Don. Don. <laughs> like, it was like, I'm I don't, thinking, I don't... is Don a strange name? I know a few people named Don. I think it was that odd. But uh, that made me laugh. But uh, he's so right. Like, that's like saying, you know, you these big companies where someone interns and, you know, let's say the, the not CEO, but, you know, the executive VP – of sales, well, mm -hmm. they have interns, and then someone says, "Oh, I worked for you. I was an intern for you. You weren't, you weren't oh, interning well, for that person." Well, I'm an intern know? for uh, Dave Portnoy. If you didn't know this, e exactly. You know, I mean, uh, so it's kind of an odd thing to say. You know, I was your intern, and Kirk's like, "I, I didn't have intern. He met yeah. them, but he didn't have interns." It was uh, my favorite part of that call was, you know, Kirk was like, "Well, what else?" did you want me to do? And he just goes, you know, well, I mean, it wasn't called the Chris Curtis show. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, damn, this guy wanted some like fatherly affection from Kirk, yeah. which I have taken the complete opposite approach. I will never reach out to Kirk for anything. Uh, I would, I couldn't even imagine reaching out to him and being like, Hey, listen, I want to learn more from you. Let me be by your side. I can, I can just imagine that, go, that going over great. You want to intern and, and, and uh, ask about broadcasting and sit next. To yeah. Him. I just want to, just want to sit next to him for a show and just kind of see, you know, see how things are, see how things work in his mind and you know, maybe take him out to dinner and, you know, just kind of get inside of his head, you know, what made him choose the case and, and all this other stuff. Although but, uh, but, the, the guy, Don, 
did say he was there at um, an epic moment, right? That he said he filmed. Kirk. Oh yeah, oh, I thought you were talking about the the Vegas story that no one no one gave a oh, shit about. Yeah. It's like that he had to like, come in the next morning. Yeah. It's like oh damn! It's like I was actually there for the Vegas. The, I, I was like, waiting. To hit, yeah, right. Talk about trying to associate yourself with the tragedy. I was waiting for something like I was, know, had. A, I read a relative like I don't know Mike's mother who was actually there. I mean, yeah. I mean, like I was there waiting to get on the plane to Miami when my phone, I checked my phone and Kobe died. I was the one who broke the news to Mike Geary. Yeah. I'll be sharing that story for the rest of my life. Uh, especially. I'm not, to a few I'm not sure with the, it did. It, it did make me laugh. Cause I'm not sure what the, the whole point of that was other than I, I may, I thought maybe he was going to say, you know, I stayed up all night and I was still or, or like Chris Curtis made me stay up all night. Or, you know, I saw Chris, I, you know, I saw him yeah, take a swig of something, yeah, it was but it was just like, he was like, but, but when he said it, he was just like, uh, Oh, you got to, uh, yeah, you got to cut, cut up sound. And, cut and I was, okay. I was cutting up sound and people getting shot. And it's like, oh. um, here's a clue. Okay. You're a fucking intern and your job is to cut up sound. Yeah, I understand like, what the story was. And it, and it wasn't like crazy. It wasn't like Curtis was like, go to Vegas, interview people. <laughs> you know, we'll get so. shot. Well, with that being said, I do hope he calls in again. Oh, yeah. Don I mean, uh, you know, hopefully he gets uh, that personal connection with Kirk that he uh, he so tragically missed in the past. There was another caller. And it's funny because this caller actually brought up something that I myself brought up to the person in question. So, Caller calls up and oh, so looks like Kirk, before we get to the call that has to do with this, looks like Kirk is going to be on the Dave Portnoy show next week. Uh, Tim, I know you don't listen. Uh, it, it, Dave's honest on it. He's It's old school bar stool. It's perfect. I think I think Kirk's going to do an awesome job of promoting the case I'll, on there. I'll definitely listen to that one for sure. It's uh, it's going to be awesome. So, so this guy had a uh, – he uh, had some advice for Kirk when he's on the Dave Portnoy show. So instead of promoting the case, you know, this huge podcast that the entire, which let's just call Penn a billion dollar company at this point. It seems like Barstool, uh, let's just call them a billion dollar company. So they're all getting behind this podcast. They mm -hmm. think it can be huge. They think the future season two, season three, season four can be very, very money-tastic, you know, can make a lot of money for them. And this guy, this guy wants Kirk to go on there and say, Dave, listen, I know this is the first time I'm on, I'm on as guest as your show. I'm your employee. I know I know they're they're more equals, but Kirk is still an employee of Dave Porto. I'd say you need to have Blind Mike on because it would help his Patreon. I thought that was hilarious. I that is awesome. I could imagine <laughs> Portnoy's response if anyone. First of all, if Kirk ever said that, he would he would be convinced it wasn't Kirk. He would be like, "There's no chance Kirk would come on here." Or, and, all right, it, it, you know, point. He'd be like, "All right, what's the setup? What's the joke? What, what are you getting at here?" Yes, you know? because he'd snip it right out. That would be something that, like, one of the uh, the lower people at Barstool would be like, "Oh, you got to have my friend on," or like, I, I don't know if you saw this, but White Sox Dave in terms, uh, Portnoy was live on TV on like Fox Business or something, and uh, White Sox Dave came up to him and started talking to him about. Uh, like his cousin or something. He goes like, we're live on TV. So it's like, that would be something you would expect out of one of these other people. But I, oh, so Portnoy goes on there and says, okay, listen, let's talk about the case. And Kirk goes, we'll get to that. But first you got to have Mike on. Listen, he interned for you. He was a big fan. So I listened to the Dave Portnoy show yesterday and it was mentioned a couple times that he wants to have old school barstool people on there. I'm sure you won't know these names, but in, Intern Dana, uh, Pirate Seth. Dana at the courthouse. Dan no, you're thinking oh, that's a different Dana. This is oh, the is. this is the female that interned with Mike. If you ever go oh, back okay. and watch like the baseball videos, uh, Pirate Seth, uh, bad haircut. Uh, maybe it's by I don't know. Pirate Simon, weird haircut. Seth, like all these old school barstool people. And I thought to myself, I said, oh, you know, maybe Mike should reach out to Eddie, who hosts the show. And uh, and say he wants to come on, and Mike's like, I have I have no interest in doing that. So it's more of just a, I, like like Kirk said, he's not sure that Mike would have interest. From what I gathered from my conversation with him, is that he would have no interest in that. But uh, but I still think Kirk should go on the show and then uh, try to promote Blind Mike's Patreon. <laughs> uh, I think from now on, every single show he goes, 
he goes on to promote the case. He also say, also a lot of great content on patreon.com slash blind Mike. <laughs> Today they're looking at an old family matters, <laughs> family matters episode where someone tries drugs <laughs> and they're like, what so, the? So, so a, a Barstool funded, promoted, supported podcast, call it what it is, investigation that may lead to a conviction. From yes. what I'm seeing on Twitter and things that are going on with the people in question, this may actually lead to some action being taken mm -hmm. and revive the case. But the better idea was to promote Mike's Patreon. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. This was all a big plan. You see, Mike... Notice how the case idea came up after Mike left. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it to the case. This this is amazing. It it really is amazing to think what may what may come of this uh, because you don't hear that much with most true crime. I don't know of many true crime podcasts. There's so many that have led to um, cases being resolved. I'm sure there are. I, I'm quite sure there are, but I've never heard of them. But man, if that happens, or there's at least an arrest in this, or they they start, you know, reinvestigating, that's incredible. I and think it's think also Bostol is the one that's you know it's Kirk that's doing yeah. this. That's incredible. I also think it's more these true crime podcasts also don't necessarily try to lead to an arrest, but no, they try to bring no. it into the public view to know, hey, this person is not a good person. Yeah, or uh, they're just telling a story because some of them are sadly interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But this so, seems uh, like more. It 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 seems like this is twofold: a story and an investigation. I hmm. mean, the shit that they were doing. I I can't wait to hear the behind the scenes, a little bit yes. of what they've already been doing. I can't mm -hmm. wait to hear about that because no, no be, uh, way would I be going where they were going. Yeah. Um, based on the film that they took, that is some risky crap. Yeah. So, I think. Kirk, just please promote Blind Mike's Patreon wherever you go from now on. <laughs> go on, you know, Fox 25 and just say, hey, I know we're talking about this old, you know, this girl who was taken uh, 30 or 40 years ago. But uh, but you got to check out. You got to check out. You got to check out Hanging with Blind Mike every Wednesday. So, well, uh, Justin, I'll give you a quick segue. Maybe the blue check mark could support Blind Mike's Patreon. Oh, they fucking suck. They, yeah. I mean, it was the name of the, uh, the episode – I'm convinced that if Kirk and Barstool cured cancer no, and it no was credit. and it no was credit. sponsored by like Boston Children's Hospital, they would be like, oh, well, have you seen the fatality rates of Boston Children's? Like they would just go after these fucking innocent people and uh, whatever his name was. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I, whatever I can't, his name. I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, Shahade. Yeah, Shahade. Yeah. Shithead. Uh, just to say, like, hey, listen. We are not going to support anything Barstool does. It, 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 it's beyond the point. Dave was actually talking about it on the most recent episode of the uh, uh, Dave Portnoy show where he goes, he goes, people say they like Barstool when they say, oh, you know, I don't like Barstool. Oh, except for the Zero Block 30 guys. Oh, except for the PMT guys. Oh, except for these, except for them. Dave said, you should just come out and say you just don't like me. Stop lumping me in. Start stop lumping Barstool in with me because it's been a completely different change of the company over these past yeah, ten years. Sure. It's evolved. Sure. So I don't know. I, I don't know evolved what... the way that certain people want it to evolve. And tough titties to that. Thank God it hasn't. You know. Yeah. And because Kim, all you'd I... have is another Huffington Post and fucking Deadspin. Oh, Jesus Christ. Deadspin's also was dead. This is a fake Deadspin. Anyone who works for Deadspin now is a scab. Remember that, Tim. That's that's big yeah, news. Good point. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think that no matter what Kirk and Barstool does, there's always going to be a certain segment of Twitter, a certain segment of the population who just hates him, who will just refuse to give him credit for anything. I'm telling you, if he, if he come out and was like, oh, my God, you know, I just cured IBS or fucking – uh, I don't know, colon cancer or something like people would be like, oh, yeah, well, hmm. so someone else did that. Uh, a lot of, lot of uh, butt focus with you today, though. I yeah, I am kind of focused. I've been, dude, I've been shitting up a storm, yeah. but it's, uh, but yeah. So, well, it, it, and don't forget, it wasn't just not supporting anything Bostool does, but the fact that they passed it off out of hand and said, I don't need to read it. I, t I don't need to know what's in it to know that it's not good because of where oh. it came from. Yeah, and and right, and that is that is ignorance at its peak. And like, 
like I said before, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know any controversy Taser has ever been in. Like, are they like a controversial company? Um, I'm not sure. I have no clue. All so. I do know is the new sponsor. That's where I get my uh, gators from SA. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, I it's awesome. I, I get, I, like they said, I get the buy one, get four free. I get packs of these in the house. These things are freaking awesome. That's awesome. I definitely yep. got to. Hasn't, even with my fat face, it hasn't fully stretched out to the point where you can't wear it anymore. So, mm. uh, psyched that they're sponsoring them. I, I don't know. Taser is a non lethal weapon these days. Um, to use for self defense. I, I, I've never heard of someone like robbing a store with a taser or something. Yeah, so. right. It's probably happened, but I'm with you. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I haven't but heard it's of not it. an epidemic of it. I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, let's face it, Justin. Kids can't make the gun symbol. Bam, That's bam. True without getting chastised by their teachers or what have you. So it doesn't surprise me at all, uh, but I'm glad someone. Uh, Tim, can I, Tim, real quick, real oh, quick, real quick. It is uh 537. And with that, how many minutes before six o'clock? 537 is 23 minutes to the hour. From Justin, the hour? listen, I'm telling you four hours of you doing that. You can't, you can't go wrong. You've gotten it right every time. <sighs> and, and I just want to mention. Yes. I, I finally mention, found my calling. I don't know oh if it'll, I don't know if it'll get played on the show. I made a prank call with your with your words. Oh, really? Um, it's not it's not great. Holy shit, was that hard to do? Yeah. Because you, your brain is saying what it should be, and I'm a mush mouth. Like yeah, I told you. I made fun of you to deflect from me because I get words yeah. wrong all the time. But it was hard to <laughs> squeeze those words in there. The the uh, uh, viatrol viatrol. Which vitriol. is vitriol. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. There was a few other. I got like four or five on this call, and my my brain was hurting. But uh, mm -hmm. hopefully, it came out okay. Yeah. Let's let's hope so. so let's thank hope you for it. the content. Yeah, I try. I try. So anyway, let's wrap this up. I don't know if you have anything on uh, this uh, week in Kirkman Hand Show history. I saw you tweeted out something the other day that was kind yeah, of yeah. Yesterday, I tweeted something out. It was a few um, few milestones. Uh, Mike had the gag order. <laughs> Portnoy said, "Mike is banned from speaking anything about Boston, but he has a one day monetarium, which mm -hmm. is supposed to be moratorium." Yep. So he mispronounced the word, which you and I can't make fun of him for, and he also got the wrong definition of what he was letting uh, Mike do. It was grace period, not moratorium. Anyway, yes. um, so Mike was banned from speaking about Barstool. Um, Kirk banned any calls coming in on any of the KMS shows except for Men is Live and Go for Gary, and there was one other thing. But um, the only other thing I wanted to mention is tonight for my final Periscope. I'm finally doing this, Justin. We're going to pull the names for the first two teams to match up in KMS Trivia. Tonight. Oh, there Probably we go. Around. 9 30 10 o'clock after I very exciting tomorrow. very exciting yes uh, looking forward to kicking that off i i kind of wanted to wait until the show was back in swing mm -hmm. you know so people are perfect, um, more perfect. Into it. oh the last thing i wanted to mention too uh so they mentioned and portnoy's mentioned this before that he had a video filmed firing kirk and firing the kirk minahan show that has never seen the light of day I would love to see what that video was. I smell another fundraiser, right? A, a, a fundraiser to get Portnoy to release. Someone, how much would someone pay for Portnoy to release? Although he'd probably just say, "Yeah, hey, have it. I don't give a shit." Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, it's uh, you know, he's dealing in he's dealing in the in some big numbers now, so I'm not sure. Uh, but he's but sure. he's still Dave. That's something he could be like. I don't know right. why everybody gives a shit. Take it, Eddie. Play it. You know. But I'd, give it I'd like. To, yeah, I'd like to see uh, Kirk. Uh, the the Kirk firing video. Obviously, knowing now that the relationship with Barstool is much better, and that there's a uh, yeah, it'd, know, be Kirk. it'd be interesting. Do you think? Do you think Portnoy put it aside for a later date, just in case? No, I think it was very specific to because when Portnoy that, does these firing, event. when he does the emergency press conference firing people, it's it's not pre done. Oh, it's it's uh, he always talks about. The it's like in the moment. Yeah, yeah, he'll do it from like his bed. I think I think yeah. Ravenport's was in his bed. He's like, you're fucking fired. You can't be calling stool. These morons. What a piece of shit so, that guy is. Ugh. Yeah, that was, that was funny. Oh, he's just seeing seeing you know him go at war with Kitty. Well, that about that about does it here on the Kirkmanahan wrap Last up show. Me, Justin, what time is it as we wrap up? Oh fuck, uh, it's five forty one. That is nineteen to the hour. Thank you. So. For that. 
Um, anytime. I will talk to you guys on a new platform on Friday because obviously I'm still going to upload these to YouTube. But uh, to be live, I believe it's going to be on the Kirk. I think it's KMS show or Kirkman hand show, Kirkman show on Twitch. I'm going to figure that out and get that all sorted out tonight. So thank you, Tim, for joining me. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And I will talk to you guys soon.